Welcome back. This is going to be the uh, weekly forecast for the S&P 500. And uh, as you can see, uh, last week's uh, trading sessions were extremely bullish. And one of the main reasons why uh, the Fridays or Thursdays uh, sessions were so bullish was basically the jobs numbers. Um, we have basically broken through every resistant line there is. And the only uh, resistant area that is left is this gap over here. And if that gap gets filled, we will basically test the all time highs. And if we breach this uh, resistant area here, then we will continue with the, the uh, bull run. So I mentioned the, the unemployment numbers. So we were basically expecting a 19.7% a unemployment rate. So it was 14.7%. Uh, and it was the expectations were that the, the unemployment rate would hit 19.7%. And actually, it, the unemployment rate fell to 13.3%. Uh, um, the, there were 2.5 million jobs added to the economy. And this is really, really strange. Whether or not these numbers are right or not, I cannot say. But to uh, for an estimate to be this far off, it is highly unlikely. So in the next coming weeks, we will most likely figure out whether or not this was an error or not. But of course, when you get such a bullish uh, number, uh, the market is going to react. And it, it reacted in an extreme way. So if we go back to the to the to the chart, we can basically see that uh, uh, that we had a big jump, and then we had an uh, enormous uh, gain uh, with this candle here. Um, I could give several reasons why we should not be at this level, and I'm also going to explain why that is. But first, I'm just going to go through the, if, uh, the technical uh, indicators, what they basically say. And if we first look at the RSI, so uh, the RSI is at the moment at 80.4, uh, which indicates that this market is way overbought. The bullish momentum in this market is, uh, is, um, is extreme at the moment. Of course, any good news and will basically get this market going upwards. And when you get uh, a jobs number that is that bullish, the market will technically uh, explode. So we are way overbought, uh, but the indicator shows that we are continuing to go up. It's not, gonna, not indicating that we're going down. Uh, it is basically indicating that we're going up. So we may see that this indicator goes up to probably 90 or something like that. The same goes for the, the MACD. Uh, there is no indication that we're going to cross the, the uh, we have a cross and signaling uh, uh, selling opportunity. So we will most likely continue uh, this upward trend. The same goes for the stochastic. It has been signaling that we have are way on our way down that um, sellers have, well, they have not showed up yet and we are not in a position that uh, of uh, starting to sell in this market. The Bollinger Band, we have been uh, here several times before. Uh, we have been hooking this uh, uh, upper uh, Bollinger Band several times and we are still doing the same things, the uh, same thing. Uh, we can see we were here and here and uh, this constant grind upwards. Even though volatility has increased, we have not seen an increase in selling. We have just been seeing an increase in buying. So, yeah, as, like I said, the only resistance that basically is left is this gap over here and the all-time highs. We will get, if we will get there, 
yeah, most likely. Uh, but I would be cautious at this point because, in essence, economic fundamentals have been thrown out the roof. This has nothing to do uh, with the real economy. This has, this is technically just the Fed uh, popping up the market. And what the Fed is basically doing is, what I'm afraid they're doing, is that they're creating an enormous bubble in the stock market. And at some point, uh, smart money will come back in and we will see enormous volatility and I would actually expect uh, the market to go down. Whether or not that is before we hit the old times high, old time highs or afterwards, but I don't know. Uh, but I'll show an example that this is not uh, the sign of a recession. Recessions last longer than this. So the the stock market and stock market is not indicating a recession, while the real economy is indicating a recession. So, for example. We were at this level. We were at this level in uh, here. This is uh, in December 2019. And if we just look at the fundamentals at the, at the economy back then, uh, unemployment rate was around 3 4% in the United States. And consumer spending was at an all-time high. Production and services... Companies were basically earning a lot of money. The economy was actually doing really well. So why are we back at this level? Because the fundamentals of the economy are completely different now than they were back in 2019. So at this point, unemployment rate, as I showed you, well, is at 13.3%. And consumer spending is much, much lower now than it was in 2019. Actually, people, millions of people have lost their jobs. They have lost their ability to spend in the same way as they did in 2019. And that will basically affect companies' earnings. They will not sell more products and services as they did in 2019. So why we are at this level, why it is in indicating that when the economy is growing, I, the only my explanation I have is basically that the Fed is basically pumping up this market. They're creating an enormous bubble because this has nothing to do with reality in the economy. So if we go back and look at the last two... Um, two recessions. So we have the dot-com bubble here, 2000 to 2002, and we have the Great Recession here from 2007 to 2009. So both these recessions lasted for two years. It took the stock market two years from go from an all-time high to, to, to the low point. And the same goes for, that was for the dot-com bubble, and the same goes for the, uh, for the Great Recession. It took two years for the market to, market to bottom. This, the coronavirus, or this recession, if you can call it a recession, uh, it took two weeks for the market to bottom. So compare it to two years, both in the last two recessions, and this took two weeks. And it took nearly three months to get back to all-time highs. This is not an indication of a recession. This is what basically a recession looks like. A long, gradual decline. This is not a long, uh, gradual decline. So whether or not we are in the recession or not, the stock market is not indicating that we're in a recession. The economy is indicating that we're in a recession. 
So at some point, this market will wake up and it's well overdue. And what is uh, what I mean by that is that every recession occurs around every 8 to 10 years. So it takes um, uh, from a bull market st starts until it ends is around roughly 8 to 10 years. So, for example, here, when the bull market started was in this uh, um, period here, it was 2002, and it ended in 2007. So, uh, so roughly five years, roughly like that. Um, but from the bottom of the Great Recession and to the all-time highs here is roughly 11 years. So we're already past one one year past the um, overdue uh, in the market. We should have had probably nearly uh, one recession already uh, since uh, the Great Re Recession. But yeah, we're going to say we have been in a bull market and the market is still indicating that we are in a bull market. It is not indicating that we are in a recession. So whether or not we continue from here, uh, maybe. Um, I am definitely not a buyer uh, in this market. I am just going to uh, wait and see what technically is going to happen because it is clear that uh, this is, has nothing to do with uh, economic reality. And I can give an example of this. For example, if you look at the airline stocks, So we can pick basically any airline, you know, one of the major airlines um, at the moment, and and look at their, their stocks. All of them are uh, have the same um, um, beha are, have been behaving in the same way. So we had this enormous fall in the airline stock, and this was due to basically air airlines shutting down. They basically cut around. Uh, 80 to 90 percent of their capacity so nobody was allowed to to uh, to uh, to fly and therefore airlines were hit uh, really bad same goes for cruise liners and the same for hotels restaurants and so on so this has been really choppy the last three months have been really choppy for the airlines and and but the past two weeks we have basically seen an explosion in airline stocks. And this doesn't make any sense because the virus is still out there. There's no cure for the virus. So, so nothing has changed whatsoever. From the bottom here and to, and to the present day, we're still in the same situation. Uh, there's still restrictions, for example. So airlines are not able to to fly in the same way as prior to the coronavirus, and there will be enormous restriction for a long time. Basically, they cannot uh, fill the airplanes with uh, as many passengers as they could prior to the coronavirus, and they have to wear masks and so on and so on. So. This is indicating that airlines are growing, that revenue technically is growing and there, there is growth in this industry. On the contrary, nothing has changed. Um, subsequently, even though we, the restrictions were, were, uh, were removed, we would still not see the same consumption in, in traveling as we saw prior to the coronavirus. That's not going to happen because you will have elderly and sick people that have been hit the hardest in, the, in this crisis. They will be afraid to travel. So those customers, they will not go traveling. Uh, then you just have normal people that just are afraid of technically traveling or of getting sick. 
So there's not that many consumers now than there were before the coronavirus hit. So yeah, airlines are going to be in a, in a in a in a tough spot for a long time. Subsequently, these airlines have um, increased their debts enormously, as Warren Buffett basically said. Most of, most of these airlines will take on around ten to twelve billion dollars in debt, and that debt has to be repaid over time. So their profits will basically go to repaying debt. So um, for shareholders, that is a really bad thing. You're not going to see a dividend from, from these airlines anytime soon. And yes, I think this is one of the best example of how unrealistic the market is at the moment. Technically, airlines, yeah, compared to prior to the coronavirus, are it's it's a dead market. There is no market here. Uh, the current market is unsustainable for all of these airlines. If they, uh, because even prior to the coronavirus, they had to fill up their. Uh, every air um, airplane in order to make a profit. They are making a loss in every, every, every plane that leaves an airport at this moment. So this will not continue. At some point, uh, people really will realize like they did back in the, in 2000 when they were investing in these tech companies that they didn't have the value that they expected it to have. The same goes for real estate in 2007. It did not have the value that that they they thought it did, thought it had. And this is basically what causes bubbles to burst. You make enormous investment in something that you think has great value when it technically doesn't. And yeah, I would not like to be on the wrong side of this, to be fairly honest. Um, Airlines are going to have um, uh, probably years in order to recover, even though this indicates that they already have recovered. So, Thank you very much. Hope uh, that you subs- like this video and hope you subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.